Hi everyone, I'm Omar Villafranca. Thank you for joining us. The push to vaccinate the United States from COVID-19 is moving slower than expected as the virus continues to spread virtually unchecked across the country. The U.S. saw another record number of deaths Wednesday, more than 3,700 in a single day. With hospitalizations continuing to climb and ICU space dwindling, the CDC predicts it likely won't be long until an estimated 4,000 people die from the virus each day. More than 12 million doses of vaccines have been distributed across the United States, but as of yesterday, less than 3 million first doses had been given out. CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bajorquez is in Miami, where there's so much enthusiasm for the vaccine, people are crashing registration sites and overwhelming hotlines in an effort to book an appointment. Demand for the coronavirus vaccine is surging across Florida. In Orlando, a massive line of cars wrapped around the convention center. In Lee County, seniors camped out overnight. I'm scared, that's why, and I want to be free. Dr. Aldo Calvo told us this Broward County site is booked through February. We had 100,000 calls in less than 24 hours requesting appointments for vaccination. 30,000 email requests. Federal officials acknowledged more needs to be done to get shots into arms. They also noted vaccination efforts are still in the early stages. Essentially, it's been just 12 days. There's two holidays. There's been three major snowstorms, and I believe that uptake will increase significantly as we go forward. But the federal government left the work of administering vaccines to the states and more national leadership is needed to manage the logistical challenges, says CBS News medical contributor Dr. David Agus. Giving each state the ability to do it themselves and each county the ability to developing their rollout plans probably wasn't the smartest move. So we're at that 11th hour and we have to succeed here and we're not. On Wednesday, California became the second state to report a case of the new COVID variant first detected in the UK, and it's likely in several states already, says Dr. Anthony Fauci. I don't think that the Californians should feel that this is something odd. This is something that's expected. In Los Angeles County, officials have requested the return of the USNS Mercy medical ship as hospitals are flooded with COVID patients every day. At the current rate, some hospitals may soon be faced with the unthinkable, rationing care. That's according to Dr. Tirso Del Junco. When you have multiple patients that are going into cardiac arrest or code blues, not everybody can respond to those. So they're having to make a choice. Who do I respond to? Who do I not respond to? As for the new case of the COVID variant in Southern California, officials say it was reported in a 30-year-old with no recent travel history. While the CDC believes that variant is much more contagious, it does not appear to be more deadly. Officials also say the approved vaccines should protect against it. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Miami. Let's bring in Justin Gill. Justin is an urgent care nurse practitioner at Providence Health and Services. He's also chair of the legislative and health policy for the Washington State Nurses Association and a health policy lecturer at the University of Washington Bothell. Let me start with this. We know the Trump administration, like they did with the country's testing program, is leaving the final steps up to the states. And of the more than 12 million vaccine doses that have been distributed, less than a quarter have been put into people's arms right now. Why is that? And what are the challenges standing in the way? And I want your perspective since you're on the front lines. Yes, well, thank you so much, Omar, for having me. I um, am fortunate enough to uh, work on the front lines and care for individuals that are dealing with COVID-19 uh, in my community in a walk-in clinic setting. Uh, I think that the answer to your question is, is very, very complicated. And I think a lot of it really depends on our states and our local governments able to coordinate with health systems in order to implement a vaccine rollout. A lot of the issues that we're facing are pre-existing before the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, our Surgeon General Jerome Adams had indicated that, uh, you know, we're dealing with a system that where public health systems are poorly underfunded, uh, poorly resourced, and we are essentially in that 11th hour where we need to be able to implement this vaccine, um, go by what the CDC recommends, but also allow states to individualize uh, distribution to their specific areas. A, a big chunk of those doses are being saved for people's second round to complete their vaccinations. 
but at a certain point, they have an expiration date. What are the arguments for holding that second dose in storage as opposed to getting more people that first round of shots and then waiting for the, the next round to come? Well, that's a tough decision. Um, you know, when it comes to the vaccine, we don't want to see any doses wasted. We want to be able to see every dose used um, and given to an individual to protect them from COVID-19. The issue is, is you also want to be able to provide effective protection. So you want to make sure that everybody that needs that second dose or is due to have that second dose is able to get it. Um, at the same time, you don't want to allow these vaccines to expire because those are doses that could go to um, someone that's in a congregate living facility uh, or somebody else that could benefit from it. Uh, as we get more vaccine available, I think that that is something that um, will become a little bit easier to handle. Uh, with Moderna being uh, or receiving an emergency use authorization, uh, in addition to Pfizer, that's a reassuring step. Uh, but these vaccines are two-dose series. So that means that people do need to have two doses in order to have effective protection, um, up to 95% in, in both of those cases. Uh, so it's weighing those risks and benefits. Um, at the same time, there needs to be good coordination between our state and our federal governments. Because if the federal government is letting our states know this is how much vaccine you're getting and the state prepares, and then there's less vaccine available, it's difficult to make those changes in the last minute. Well, let me touch on that again, because you also laid out the problem which I asked about. But how come there's no decision being made saying everything that's coming out is just first round and it's not, hey, we're going to save these first and second round for these people? Why are why is there that hesitation at all? Why not give them all to first round people? Are you worried that the second round is not going to come? Well, I would have to say I think it's probably a little bit of both of that, right? So you want to be able to vaccinate as many people as you can, but you also want to be able to have enough doses for those individuals to get their second dose at that three-week period, whether it's Pfizer or four weeks if it's Moderna. So, you know, I completely understand why certain regions would want to hold on to doses, but that I would agree with you. It's a tough decision to make because there's individuals that are contracting the virus and the deaths are going up. And it's something that you have to really weigh. How many doses do we have available? What are we expecting to come in? And, you know, how can we make the best decision so that you can save the most lives? That's going to be individual Over the to every state oh. and every location mm -hmm. as well. Let me let me hit you with this. Over the weekend, a Wisconsin hospital announced they had to throw out more than 500 doses because an employee accidentally left dozens of the vials unrefrigerated overnight. Then on Wednesday, the hospital said they were left out intentionally. Obviously, that's going to spur a bunch of conspiracy theories. We don't have all the information as to why that happened, but we know there is a lot of misinformation out there that's causing skepticism. How important will public education about the safety of the vaccines in the process, beyond just getting them there, how important is that public education? That is probably the most important piece of this. We will not be able to see our way out from this pandemic unless we get a significant majority, and as Dr. Fauci has mentioned, 75 to 85 percent of the population vaccinated. This is where, you know, our communities and our localities play the biggest role. And when I talk with patients and when I talk with some family members and friends, I inform them that getting a vaccine is partially an individual choice, but it's also a choice for your ability to impact your community. What you do impacts every other individual around you. The same concept can be applied to masks. It can be applied to social distancing. So it really kind of highlights the fact that everybody's health is connected. I was fortunate enough to receive the vaccine um, on December 19th, and uh, I will be due for a second dose in about a week. And for myself, I think it's important for us on the front line to be able to highlight that we received the vaccine. We're going to continue to care for COVID-19 patients and screen for COVID and educate the public. But we need the public to be able to support us as well. This is not just a effort for healthcare workers. It's an effort for all of us. It's going to be an interesting next few weeks, even though it's going to be a new year. We're still in an old situation. Nurse practitioner Justin Gill, thank you very much for your time and your service. Thank you so much.